Do you have difficulty with math? Worry no more because I have a solution for you. Let's have math classes with Mamshi. See you in class. Our last topic for week four is domain and range of an inverse function. So this is our topic for week 4D. And our objective is at the end of this discussion, the students will be able to find the domain and range of an inverse of a function. So remember that the domain of a function is the complete set of possible values of the independent variable and the range of a function is the complete set of all possible resulting values of the dependent variable, which is usually written as y after we have substituted the domain. Take note that these are the x values and these are the y values. So let's find the domain and the range of the inverse of the given function. So as you can see, the inverse of this is x minus 4. And so, as you can see, if we have this linear equation, the domain of it is all real numbers. So, we can say that the domain is the value of x such that x is an element of a real number. And so, since there is no restriction, our range will be y such that y is an element of a real number. Okay, as you can see, this just this is just a linear equation. Linear function, rather. So since it is a linear function, we can say that the domain and the range are all real numbers. Let's continue. Same thing will happen here. The inverse of this function will be x minus 3. And so our domain will be all real numbers, or we can write that as x, such that x is an element of a real number, and our range is also y, such that y is an element of a real number. Okay, let's continue with the other example. Number three, same thing will happen. We have x plus 5, and so our f inverse of x is equal to x plus 5. Take note that the domain will still be x such that x is an element of a real number. And our range will be x such that x is an element of real number. Okay, for number 4, let's try to find the inverse of this. We have y equals 4x, and so x equals 4y. Divide both sides by 4, and so our y equals x over 4. On this case, we don't have any restrictions on x because our denominator is only 4. And so the domain will be x such that x is an element of real numbers. And the range is also x such that x, i sorry, sorry, it's not x but y. y such that y, such that y is an element of real number. Okay, let's continue with number 5. We have 8x minus 1. Let's try to find its inverse. So we have x equals 8y minus 1. And so we have x plus 1 equals 8y. Divide both sides by 8. And so x plus 1 over 8 equals y. This will be the inverse of our function. If inverse of x is equal to x plus 1 over 8. And since we don't have any variable here below, so we don't have any restriction on number 5. And so our domain is x such that x is an element of real number and same thing with our range x such that x is an element of, i sorry 
it's not x but y so a range will be y such that y is an element of real number now let's proceed to number six let's find first the inverse of this y equals x minus one over two x and so we have x equals y minus one over two y and multiply both sides with two y to eliminate the denominator so we have two x y equals y minus one then transfer your y on the left side so we have two x y minus y equals negative one and so we have y times 2x minus 1 equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2x minus 1. And we get y equals negative 1 over 2x minus 1. Or we can write that as f inverse of x equals, let's make this positive. So we have positive 1 all over positive 1 minus 2x this will be the inverse of the graph so if we are going to find the domain and the range so the domain is the restriction let's find the restriction for x values and also the restriction for y values okay those are the possible values that could not be included for the domain and could not be included for the range so if we are going to look for the restriction of x we are also looking for the vertical asymptote what value is found on the vertical asymptote and also this one is for the horizontal asymptote okay so our domain must be not a value of x so we have for the domain we have negative 2x equals negative 1 and so x is equal to 1 half on this case our domain must be x such that x is an element of real number where x is not equal to one half now let's find the range the range will be the restriction for y as you can see the the degree of the numerator and the denominator is not equal the numerator has less degree compared to the denominator and so the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero so therefore the range of the function must be y such that y is an element of real number but y is not equal to zero that will be the range for the given function on number six let's continue with number seven let's find first the inverse of this so we have we have y equals x minus two all over x plus seven then interchange that we have x equals y minus 2 over y plus 7 multiply both sides with y plus 7 in order to eliminate your denominator so we have xy plus 7x equals y minus 2 then interchange your y change your um put your y on the left side of the equal sign and also your 7x to the right side so we get xy minus y equals negative 7x minus 2 then factor this out we get y equals x minus 1 a uh, y times x minus 1 rather equals negative 7x minus 2 then if you are going to divide both sides with x minus 1 so we get y equals negative 7x minus 2 all over x minus 1. So our f inverse of x is equal to negative 7x minus 2 all over x minus 1. So again, 
in order to find the domain, we have to find the restriction of x here. And so x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1. So the domain is x such that x is an element of a real number, but your x must not equal to 1. Okay, that is for the domain. And let's find the range. The range is the the range is the basis uh, the basis of our range is the horizontal asymptote so as you can see the degree here on the numerator is one and the degree on the denominator is also one since they have equal degrees we have our range must not be equal to a over b where our a is the numerical coefficient of the leading coefficient and also the the leading coefficient in the numerator and also your b is equal to the numerical coefficient of the leading coefficient in the denominator so we have negative 7 over 1 and negative 7 over 1 is equal to negative 7 so therefore our range is y such that y is an element of real number where y must not equal to negative 7 because that will be our restriction for the value of y it will never touch y equals negative 7 let's continue with our example number 8 so that you can have a lot of practice so y equals 3x plus 1 over 4x and so if we are going to interchange that we have x equals 3y plus 1 over 4y Multiply both sides with 4y in order to eliminate the denominator. So we have 4xy equals 3y plus 1. Then put your y on the left side. So we have 4xy minus 3y equals 1. And also we have to factor this out. y times 4x minus 3 equals 1. And so our... If we divide both sides with 4x minus 3, in order to get the y, our y is equal to 1 over 4x minus 3. And so the inverse of our function will be 1 over 4x minus 3. So now let's find the domain. The domain are all the values of x but with the restriction will be x such that x is an element of real number but x must not equal to let's try to solve 4x minus 3 equals 0 4x equals positive 3 divide both sides by 4 so x is equal to 3 fourth so x must not equal to 3 fourth and also let's find the range the range is the basis uh, the basis of the range is our horizontal asymptote as, and as you can see the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of our denominator and so our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0 so the range must be y equals such that y is an element of r where y is not equal to 0 that will be the domain and range for number 8 let's have our number nine so we'll have y equals x plus eight over five x equals y plus eight over five multiply both sides with five to eliminate the denominator and so five x is equal to y plus eight and y is equal to five x minus eight and so the inverse of our function will be 5x minus 8. As you can see, this is a linear function. And so the domain is x such that x is an element of real number. Since it is not a, ratio, a rational function, we don't have to worry with the restrictions. And also our range will be y such that y is an element of a real number. That will be the domain and the range for 
number 9. And lastly, let's have number 10. So y equals 6 over 5x minus 1. And so interchanging that, we have 6 over 5y minus 1. Then multiply both sides with 5y minus 1. Cancel. So we have 5xy minus x equals 6. And so to have this, we can transfer x to the right side because you we don't have something to factor out with y there. So we have 5xy equals positive, six plus, positive x plus 6. Divide both sides by 5x. So our final answer will be y equals x plus 6 over 5x. So we have now the inverse of our function as f inverse of x equals x plus 6 over 5x. So the domain, I think we have restriction for x here. We have 5x equals 0, so x must equal to 0. So x such that x is an element of a real number, but x must not equal to 0. And so for our range, as you can see, the degree for the numerator and the denominator is equal. So we have to divide the leading coefficients to get the horizontal asymptote. So we have 1 here over 5. So that's y equal, not equal to 1 fifth. That will be the range of our function of the inverse of the given function on number 10. So I think that you have learned a lot from this lesson. God bless you for finishing your, sorry, it's not week 3, it's week 4. For finishing your modules in week 4. And hope to see you again on our class on general mathematics for week 5. God bless everyone. For those who are new to my channel, just subscribe to my channel, click subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated of my latest videos. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned a lot from me.